knowing not that your bodies are the members of Christ, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What, know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. All right, verse 15. Know ye not. Who's the ye referred to? Who's the ye referred to? Corinthians. What are they, lost or saved? Saved. saved. They're Christians. And by application, it could be in, uh, for us who are saved, generally true Christians even today. No, ye not. Okay, so that's a very important thing, that they should know uh, that your bodies are the members of Christ. What does that mean, the members of Christ? Saved. They're saved. Yes. Or the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Those genuine Christians are the yeah. body of Christ. Now, are the unsaved, lost, hell-bound people members of the body of Christ? No. No, they're lost. They're not members of Christ at all. But these are believers, saved people, are members of the body of Christ. That's important. Because a lot of people say that uh, uh, we don't believe that uh, you're not a part of the Christian church unless you're either one kind of denomination or another. But those that are genuine say members of the body of Christ. Then the question is asked. So I take the members of Christ. Now, what are the members of Christ again? In this verse? True believers. The true believers, but also in verse the first part of verse 15. Oh, our bodies. Our bodies. Who's the R referred to? Who's the R referred to? Your, um, it's for Christians. Okay, those in Corinth are saved, Christian people, or by application, believers, generally true Christians today. The bodies. All right, so if you're now if you're an unsaved person, your body's not the member of Christ. That's but for the members of Christ, those that are generally saved, the question is that shall I take the members of Christ, that is our bodies, and make them members of an harlot? Who is a what's a harlot? A prostitute. Prostitute. Uh, what was the basketball player that was frequenting the dens of harlotry last week? Almost died. Big Odom. tall fellow. Odom. Odom. Okay. Now, this is for believers. Prostitution, harlotry. It's uh, the, the question is what? What is the answer to that question? No. God no. Forbid. God forbid. Now, a lot of people criticize the King James Bible, say, "Well, God is not there." The word God, but. <laughs> The word in Greek is ugenoita. May it never, never be. Ugenoita. But in the King James 1611, this is a phrase that accurately translated. May it never, never be. God forbid. That's a colloquial expression, 1611. We understand what that means. It means no. Big fact, no. That's right. So we shouldn't take our members and go into a prostitute's place or quarters or whatever and, and frequent that thing and have sex with the prostitute. Now, then in verse 16, Again, this question, uh, what is the statement made between those genuine Christians if they join themselves as sexual relations with harlots? What does that say is true? Verse 16. All right. They're one body. That's right. There's one body. In other words, if you join your harlot, it's one body. Uh, what is this scripture for two says he shall be one flesh? Where does that come from? Genesis. That's right. Genesis. Uh, Genesis. Genesis. Uh, who who said that and what and what can they? Oh, excuse me. Yes. Yes, and I don't know what chapter. Oh, oh. First of all, we said that earlier, but we'll repeat. We no problem. Mm -hmm. Repetitio is a mater studiorum. You know what that means? Repetition is the mother of learning. My mom used to tell me that all the time. All right, we're in First Corinthians six. Oh, thank First you. Corinthians six and verse fifteen. Now we're in verse sixteen. Okay, <laughs> no problem. All right. So uh, uh, if they join with a harlot, you're one body, and then two souls. What on what condition? What uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. What was God saying when he said the two shall be one flesh? It's a marriage. It's a marriage. marriage. Who does he say that to? Adam, Adam, Adam and Eve. Eve. Yeah. Now, is, is it Adam and Eve or Adam and Steve? Adam and Eve. What does the Bible say about marriage? What is, how does God define marriage? A man, and a man and a woman. Absolutely. It's not two men or two women. Uh, what does our government say about marriage? Everything's acceptable. Everything's acceptable. Everything's acceptable. It's a sad thing. Now, I realize the Supreme Court made a decision or a, uh, a decision with five to four decision from a certain law. That's it. They said that particular thing. But a lot of people have confused that and saying, well, now that, that's the law of the whole country. No, it's not. Supreme Courts cannot make law. They can interpret decisions, and that's all they did. But they just pushed that to the hilt. That's uh, built. There are a lot of churches right now that are very liberal, and uh, they want to follow the lead of our politicians. And you 
of secular humanism uh, as their basis rather than the Bible. Yes, they do. But we are supposed to stand on the Bible, and God calls homosexuality an abomination. So yes. Therefore, we should as well. That's right, an abomination. Now, what might you have to pay if you stand for that? What might you have to pay? Incarceration. Maybe incarceration. Look at that Kim Jones. Uh, she would not marry these homosexuals. And it was a principal. How many days was she in jail? Five. Five, Five days, all right? Five days, first time, yes. She was in court for contempt of the judge's order. Yes, but she was there. But basically, she was there because she did not want to marry homosexual sodomites. Yeah, That's that the reason. Job. That was not her job. Yes, her job, was. according to the state, where they were against homosexual marriages, was to marry only men and women together. That's the job of Kim. And she, she obeyed the Lord instead of that stupid law of the government, which says you can marry homosexuals. So they're threatening to put her in jail again. Yeah, once more. Ed, she ran for election for that job. <laughs> exactly. And she won the election. But before the, when she ran, many, many years before, there was no such thing as sodomite marriages. She didn't run on sodomite marriages. The job was perfect man and woman. So she's clean cut. I just want to say, if you follow the Lord in this whole idea of all the things, whether it's homosexual marriages or whatever, there may be a price to pay. The question is, if you're genuinely Christian, I don't mean unbelievers. If you're a genuine Christian, you have to ask yourself the question, am I ready to face whatever comes? Am I going to stand true or not? Bill, and then Cass. We owe our faithfulness to God and only to God, not the government. If the government wants to make a law that we have to do things a certain way, then we will disobey their laws mm -hmm. if it goes against the laws of God. Amen. That's right. Yes, yeah, Cass. Yes. Now, back there in the book rack, one of the things back there very deeply is there's now, they're pressuring on this LGBT, the homosexual, all these other kinds, of sodomite uh, group of people, to go after churches. One of the things in that rule, that rule that some other are pushing, uh, I don't remember the details of it, what they're pushing is, any church that says homosexuality is a sin, they're going to come after you. They're going to come after us, because homosexuality is a sin. I'll say it over and over, it's the Bible there. We've got to pay the price. But you see, mm -hmm. our government doesn't want biblical truth. They want Sodom and Gomorrah conditions. And that's exactly what we have in our country. It's a sad thing. So we're saying this. When he said here uh, that he's, the two shall be one flesh, it was, was it two women? No. Was it two men? No. Who was it, the two? A man and a woman. That's right. Absolutely right. And that's what marriage is. And then in verse 17, uh, he that is joined unto the Lord, what is true of that person? One spirit. What does that mean to be joined to the Lord? Are they saved or lost? Saved. saved. Can an unsaved person be joined to the Lord? No. What's the only way a person can be joined to the Lord? Got to be a real born again Christian. Christian. Faith in the Lord Jesus Faith Christ. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16, let's say it. For by For I am not ashamed, ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for is the power of God unto salvation, salvation to everyone to believe it, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And John 3, 3, 16, what does that say? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so we're joined to the Lord, one, one spirit, one spirit. All right, let's read verse number 18, 19, and 20 together. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. Uh, flee fornicate. What does flee mean? Oh, excuse me. Pat, go, run from. That's right. Pastor Dan's got something. It says, um, I'm sorry, I have to open it go. Okay. Greetings from uh, Wisconsin. Uh, thank you for the wonderful preaching this morning. Looking forward to the Bible study this afternoon. Uh, may I request this song, 256. I guess we have to sing that at the end. I know you will. Let us know, 256. Who's it from, Pastor Dan? Wendy. Wendy and Rick. Wendy and Rick Coaster. Let's wave to Wisconsin. Wave to people in Wisconsin that are watching us in this program. Some people are not waving. Well, all right. It's okay. So, it's up to you. All right. So uh, that's uh, the question in verse number eight. 
Flee means what again? Repeat that again. Run. Run. Get away from. Run. What's fornication? Sexual sin. Sexual sin. Especially when married. Now, this word, uh, koite, or, or poinea, which is the Greek word for, for this, it's got a number of different factors, but generally it's speaking of unmarried people having sexual relations one with the other with, or with an unmarried person. If they're single, it's fornication. If they're married, it's adultery. But So flee, fornication. Now, who is he writing to again? Who is Paul writing to? This Christians. Is Christians at Corinth. And by application, it applies to Christians today, genuine Christians. Now, uh, do people, even genuine Christians, always obey this? No. no, it's horrendous. Horrendous. We had a Christian school not too far from here. Uh, and it's still there. It's still open. And I know I don't know what it is now, but years ago, girls were getting pregnant in that school. Christian school. See? Sad. Ridiculous. They're not taught. They don't follow the thing. Now, what causes a genuine Christian to commit fornication? The sinful nature. The sinful nature. The lust. How many natures does a Christian have, a genuine Christian? Two. two. two natures. What are the two natures? Flesh, flesh, and, flesh and the spirit. spirit. How many natures does an unsaved, non-Christian have? One. What is that? Flesh. Just the flesh. Yeah, Bill. It's because uh, they don't believe. It's a, it's a liberal foundation uh, that those students are in. They don't believe that they have to follow the Word of God. Uh -huh. uh, the Word of God is supplemental to uh, their community and to mm -hmm. their culture. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Their community and culture comes first. And then the Bible is simply supplemental. They don't put the Bible first. Mm -hmm. The Bible must be put first in the heart of the Christian. Does the world in general think fornication is a sin? No. No. They think it's fine. No problem at all. What does God say about it? It's sin. What God says is sin. We've got, if we're genuine Christians, we must agree with God that it's sin. Yes, Jen. The Lord Jesus Christ went above and beyond that and said that if if someone looks after a woman to lust after them uh, in, person, in the heart, in in the heart, heart yes. then they are guilty. Yes, they're guilty. Even that's right. Even goes beyond the physical relationship. Uh, lust after a woman with in, lust in their heart. Heart lust. Not just simply gazing. I'm looking at this woman. But see, with lust in the heart, that's the sin. You're right. But the world, again, uh, our government, whether it's, whether it's Obama or any of the people in our government, whether it's the laws of different states, in fact, uh, they don't. In fact, uh, even you take the sin of sodomy. Uh, it used to be in many constitutions, state constitution, it was a, it was guilty. It was wrong. It was an error. They put you in jail for sodomy. Now a lot of them are changing, and I'm sure some of the states still have this their sin as a and against the law for fornication. They probably changed that too. Yes. Um, I believe when George Washington was general of the army, actually the penalty for sodomy was hanging. Yes, interesting. Yes, so there's, see, but now times have changed, haven't they? Now, when the government and all the people think that sodomy is fine and fornication is fine, what should a genuine Christian do? Obey God rather than men. Obey God rather than men and disagree with the government. Regardless, we've got moral standards. And, you know, even the Ten Commandments, all but nine of them, or one of them rather, all nine of the ten, one is limited, they are uh, completed in repeated in the New Testament. The only one that's not repeated in the New Testament is what? Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day. That's Saturday. We don't believe that. But in the New Testament, all these other nine. But our government, our, all kinds of things, our stealing and different things. So this is a terrible thing. Flee, fornication. Then uh, the last part of verse 18, <coughs> every sin I'm at with is without the body. What does that mean? How can a person sin without the body? Outside. Okay, and how, how does that happen? What what sins can be committed without the body, out without using the body? Yeah, Jim. Well, what we were just talking about, lust. Right, lust. Okay, that's right. I think. The, remember the Lord Jesus in chapter seven of Mark and other places, he said, "From within, out of the heart of man, mm -hmm. proceedeth." Then about sixteen things. Adultery, fornication, lies, thievery, all these things. It's from the heart. Now, without the body, physical body, see, the heart can sin. That's what he's getting. Without the body, outside body doing something, you're slapping somebody or committing sin or whatever. So, without the body, those from within, the heart, uh, but fornication, without the body. But he that committed fornication, what does he do in verse 18? 
against his own body. Shvenik, sinneth against his own body. Uh, the body should be protected, should be, if for genuine Christians, we should protect our bodies and do that which is moral and that which is standard. Now, before we were saved, if we're genuinely Christians today, we may have done a whole bunch of things, wicked, filthy things. But once we're generated, regenerated and born again, the past is past, should be past. And now we've got a new life in Christ. And we've got to hate any sin that we did in the past and just to, to disregard it and be opposed to it and, and just despise it. Uh, sin against his own body. Uh, and then uh, in verse 19, did we read 19? No. No, we just yes, read 18. We did. Yes, read 19, okay. All right. All right. Now, who's the ye referred to here? No ye. The Corinthians. The Corinthians? Saved or unsaved? Saved. These are Christians, and by application to us today. Yes. Application to us. Know ye not that your body, what's the you refer to? Who's the you refer to? Again, the Corinthian believers, and by application to us, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. What is a temple? Dwelling place. Dwelling place? Of God. Of God. Is it holy or unholy? Holy. 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 Should it be holy? <laughs> now, some of the heathen temples, are they holy or unholy? They're on over here. Heathen temple. Yes. Well, the uh, Jews had polluted God's house when the yes. physical temple was standing. Yes. The Lord Jesus Christ drove out the money changers. That's right. And even in the Old Testament, remember, they had all kinds of things. Ezekiel. 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 They had all kinds of wicked, wicked things, pictures and drawings of things. It was a terrible thing. Uh, but the temple should be a holy place. Now, in this verse 19, what temple is referred to here? Body. Whose body? Saved or lost? Saved. Saved. Now, can an unsaved person have this uh, the temple here? No. Yeah. No, it's only for genuine Christians. And it says that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. Now, what does that mean? The Spirit of God lives, lives in you. The Spirit of God lives in and dwells with you. That's right. Yes. Dwells in you. And so, uh, now, let me ask you this. Do you necessarily have to feel the dwelling of the Holy Spirit? No. no. See, let me, let me ask you this. If some of you in here are married, do you have to feel you're married all the time to be, to be married? No. But some of you, you're still married. If you're genuinely married, you don't have to feel. It's not a feeling. This is a part, this is a scripture verse. We've got sound scripture things that the temple, the bodies of genuine Christians are the temples of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit indwells them. And that's not, not a question of feeling. Now in Galatians chapter 5, we find uh, being filled with the Spirit of God, controlled, that's another thing, but he's there. Whether Now let me, let me ask you this. Just because God the Holy Spirit indwells every genuine Christian, does that mean that every genuine Christian is controlled by the Spirit? No. no. All right, that's right. Should he or she be controlled by the Spirit? Yes. yes. And that's the that's the, the, the being filled or controlled by God the Holy Spirit. The, the three things in regard to that. Dr. Schaefer, the president of Dallas Seminary, my seminary years ago, three things. Two are negative, one is positive. He always said these are three things that must take place before you can be controlled or uh, or filled with the Spirit of God. Number one, what is the number one? Quench. What is it? Walk. No, that's positive. Okay, what are the two negatives? Quench, 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 quench not the not Spirit, not which means cause not the Spirit of God to... Now, he said under quench not the Spirit, it's when God tells you to do something as a word, you say, well, I'll think about it, I'm going to do this, maybe ask me about something else. Quenches the, it quenches the Spirit unless we are willing to do anything God asks us to do. Not simply what brings it up, I'll, I'll decide at the time. Anything he wants to do, that quenches the Spirit. Saying no, to, what's what's the next one? Grieve. Grieve. Grieve not the Spirit. What grieves the Spirit of God? No, That's right. Known, unconfessed sin. Mm -hmm. That grieves the Spirit of God. And so a Christian that has the Holy Spirit in, if he's grieving the Spirit, he has a known and unconfessed sin. Where is the verse to tell us that we're to confess our sin? First John 1 night. Let's say the first John 1 night. If we confess our sins, sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And what do we say confess means? Agreeing with God. What what word is that? Homo logeo. What does homo mean? 
Same. The same. What does look at with me? Same. Say to say the same thing about our sin as God says, agreeing with God that what we thought, said, or done is sin. If we confess, <coughs> agree with God. So we have to agree. If somebody says, "Well, I don't believe it's sin to go for fornication or stealing or lying or cheating," I'll just confess it anyway. If you don't agree with God is sin, He's not going to forgive it. You've got to agree with Him that what you did, thought, or did or, or said was sin. Then He's faithful. He does it every time. He's just because Christ died for those sins to forgive our sins and to cleanse us for all the right. So, breathe the Spirit. What's the positive thing if we are to be filled with control of the Spirit of God? Walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Quench not, grieve not, walk in the Spirit. What does that mean? In the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's the that things you have to walk in the Spirit. He's got to control us in order for us to be walking. By the Spirit. So these things are true. So uh, the body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Now which is in you? Who's the you referred to there in verse 19? Christian. Christians at Corinth, and, by application for us today. Application. Those are genuine Christians. Now is the Holy Spirit dwelling in unsaved people? Yeah. No, he's not. Yeah. They've got the spirit of the devil and Antichrist in them. Uh, what are the two fatherhoods of the whole world? What are the two fatherhoods? Father of God, Father of Satan. Who's in the family of fatherhood of God? Genuine saved Christians. Who's in the family of, of the devil? Everybody else who's never come to Christ. And when do we get into the devil's family? When we're born. Born, absolutely. Uh, what does it say? Well, uh, I was I was in, I was born in iniquity in sin that my mother conceived me. That's in the Old Testament of Proverbs, of Psalms, isn't it? Uh, actually, not just when we were born, but even immediately upon conception, there's sin. Well, why do the Roman Catholics say that you just sprinkle a little baby, he gets all uh, sin revealed, the initial sin? Is that going to happen to save that man or give? What do they say? It, it heals. Washes away what? Original sin. See, that's what they say. There's no scripture for that at all. Yes. I was just thinking another fornication that we as Christians have to be aware of is spiritual fornication. Yes. To all throughout the Old Testament, the Lord says, you know, judges Israel because mm -hmm. they went a whoring after other gods. Yes. And they mixed pagan practices and page, mm -hmm. pagan things with the God's word and yes. God's uh, commands. That's right. So that's called spiritual fornication. Absolutely. And if I could just read yeah, a verse right. real quick, it's Second Corinthians chapter six. Uh, it says, uh, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial? What part he that hath, hath he that believeth with an infidel? And here's the part I wanted to get mm -hmm. to. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For mm -hmm. ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Yes, it's spiritual fornication to go ahead and check, go into fellowship with apostasy and so on. I believe that's what they did in the Old Testament. Yeah, Will? Well, I was going to mention that God calls the last days one world church a harlot. Yes. Right. The well, mother of harlots. So the churches, whatever, that follow that mm -hmm. are also the harlots. The harlot church, that's right. And, of course, Rome, I think, in the book of Revelation, the one that sits on the throne, Absolutely. Rome would be the head, but the, all these other religions, well, I think that includes the Protestant apostates, it includes mm -hmm. the heathen religions and Mormonism, everything. The big one thing, headed by Rome, if he can keep the head, uh, he's trying to get everybody pleasing. So fornication, not only physical, but also spiritual. And walking the Spirit of God, and uh, you notice in verse 19, you have of, of God. What does that mean, you which is in you, which you have of God. What's of God mean? That means it was a gift of God. That's right. It's from God as to the source. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing, isn't it? How a holy God could enter into wicked bodies that we have right here. Sinful people, saved by God's grace through genuine faith in Him. Genuine grace. But holy God could be a part of us. The old flesh. It's a strange thing, but that's what God says. We've got to believe it. We, he have. Is that past or present? You had in the past? Past or present? You have. That's present. That's present present right. Tense. right now you have. See, Amen. It's a present truth. Uh, and ye are not your own. What does that mean? Who's the ye referred to here? 
Christians, then you're Christians. Christians. What does that mean? You're not your own. So we belong to God. Belong to God. The Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood to buy us. All right. Ransomed us. So That's we right. belong to him. <clears throat> now, uh, yes, but Will, Will. I was going to say, that means that all that we have and all that we are belong to God. Hmm. All right. Uh, you're not your own. That means you don't belong. It, it just, it's not to... Uh, you don't belong to yourself. You're not your own. Uh, now, everybody who has a house, whether you're renting it, whether you buy it or whatever it is, uh, if you own the house, that's yours. You own the house. But if you don't own it, of course, it's not yours. But the, all these things, uh, these things, you're, you're not yourself. You're bought with a price. And uh, it says very clearly that we're to uh, not, we're not, who, if we're not our own, who owns us, the genuine Christians? If we're not our own, we don't own ourselves. Who does own us? God the Lord. God the Father and God the Son. The Lord holds us. But only for genuine Christians. Uh, we're, we don't possess ourselves. Now, does that mean that God forces us to do things against our will? No. Yep. No. Uh, you see, did, when he made and created Adam and Eve, did he make them automatons? No. no. Hey, what did he give them? Free will. Free will. Did they exercise that free will? Yes. What did they do with it? They sinned, sin, that's right. Was that good or bad? It was very got us a whole race into sin. By one man, sin and into the whole world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that of sin. Romans chapter 5. So uh, we're not our own. We're not your own. Uh, we're God's. Now, if God owns us, genuine Christians, I mean, not, not does God own the unsaved people, the non-Christians? No. He doesn't own them. Who owns them? Say, not really God has the power to do what he wants with it. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, as far as real strong ownership and so on, Satan owns them. Does Satan want to lose them to God? No. He, does he want to make them into God's family? No. He wants to keep them right under his thumb. And uh, that's a terrible thing. But if, if we're not our own, uh, if, if God owns us, what should every true Christian want to do about to our owner? Serve him. Serve him. All right, we ought to serve him, obedient, obey him. Where are we going to find out how to serve him? The Bible, there is word, the scriptures. Does it matter which Bible we use? Yeah. Yes. yes, it does. Why does it matter which Bible we use if we really want to know what God's words are? Because the devil has tried to uh, imitate God's word with uh, taking things out and putting falsehoods in. Mm -hmm. but disguise it as word to deceive people. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sam. I was going to say that was the number one attack of Satan on the human race. The first thing he said mm -hmm. to Eve was, Hath God said? Hey, hath trying God to said. get human, the human race to doubt the word mm -hmm. of God. It's the same thing he does today. So to find out what God's words are, we have to know what the proper words are. Uh, Amen. All the modern versions, 99.9% .9 of them, are based on a different for instance, in the New Testament, a Greek text that our King James Bible is based. In that Greek text, how many differences does it have with the text that underlies our King James Bible? All these modern versions, 99.9. 8,000. 8,000 differences. Now, of those, some are small and tiny, but how many of those differences are doctrinal? 356 are doctrinal passages. Now, what are some of the Bibles that have these 356 doctrinal perversions in them and 8,000 differences? How are some of the English Bibles, Frank? So no, use the Revised Standard Version, NASB. New American Standard Version, ESV. English Standard Version, New International Perversion, New International Perversion, NKJV, New, New King James, yeah, New King James, yeah. Uh, New, Living New Living Translation. There's this myriad of them. There's many, three, 30 or 40 different translations. Now, let me ask you this. Why do people continue to to print translations. Why do the publishers print them? Confusion. Money. Money. Confusion. Money. 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 Okay, yeah. She, back there, Tammy's going like this. It's money. Uh, yeah. Now, if they can't make money on them, they go out of print. I mean, a lot of people go out. That RSV, how don't they get any more revised standard version anymore? That was in the 1950s that came out. Uh, they can't do too much. Stuff. So, who bought the rights to the revised standard version? It's apostate, modernistic version. Who bought the rights? Who is it? NCC. Well, there was a National Council of Church then, but who currently has bought the rights and are using that same Bible and changing it a little bit? Oh, the yes. English Standard Version. They bought that same apostate thing, 
Change the few things. There they are. Hey, how much do they pay for it, by the way? $160,000. That's right, $160,000. You got that right. Stan. I believe the name of the company is Harper Collins. Uh -huh. They own Zondervan, mm -hmm. who prints the NIV. <coughs> and mm -hmm. they're the same company that prints the Satanic Bible. That's interesting. So the same people that print the NIV yeah. print the Satanic Bible. Now, why do they print both Bibles? Because they both work for Satan. And they're, they're, why else? Who owns Zondervan? Money, money. Who owns Zondervan? Rupert Murdoch. Yeah. <laughs> and what does Rupert Murdoch, what does Rupert Murdoch also do? He owns Fox. Fox. And what else does he do? Make money. Make money. <laughs> He's all about. I understand that one of these people uh, are into pornography as well. So I don't know what if it's Murdoch or somebody else. Anyway, uh, be that as it may, what is it? Okay. So now. Uh, if God owns us, we should do what God wants us to do. The only place you can find Octane James Bible, accurate Hebrew, accurate Greek, and accurate translation technique used. There we find God's words. For instance, let me, let me give you one verse. Uh, John 6, 47. The King James Bible it says, well, let's quote it. He that believeth. Yes. 647. He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Say it again. He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. That's John 647, King James Bible. What does the new perversion say? He that believeth. He that believeth hath everlasting life. What did they leave out? Is there anything wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Makes a difference. What do you believe? Just what is it? you believe on. Here's right. If you believe leave out on me, who's the me refer to? Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one that's saying that. And if you leave it off, what can you believe to be saved? Anything. 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 The sky's the limit, see? Apostasy, heresy. These every single one of these modern versions leaves out on me. Because the Gnostics didn't believe in Christ, and the Gnostics and critical texts leave it off. Every one of these do. And, and do fundamentalist Bible believing Christians still use these perversion Bibles? Oh, yes. Yes. They do. They should know better, but they don't care. Yes, Tammy. Um, if you leave off of me, then it becomes a positive thinking type of thing. Yes. Oh, wow. I think that's right. enough that, you know, believe. Yeah, what do you believe? I'm going to get this. I'm going to get it. Yeah. I, that's right. I believe anything. Believe the lie. Believe the anything. So, <laughs> it's important. Yes, mm -hmm. Barbara. Um, we are not just saved. We are adopted and we are bought. Yes. And under Roman law, when your father adopted you, you were a son as long as your father lived. I don't care if he lived to be 150. You were never mm -hmm. an adult until your father died. Uh -huh. And we are bought out of the slave market of sin to be slaves of Christ. So yes. it's not just a matter of being saved. Right. Slaves and born. So we should serve the one that bought us and whose we are. And whom we serve, we should serve him as well. So that's all that, as far as you're not your own. And then in verse number 20, what does it mean? Ye, who's the ye referred to again? Christians. Christian believers in Corinth and for us today. Believers. What does it mean, bought with a price? What price was, was were these Christians blood bought with? Jesus. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, was Jesus Christ's blood just merely human blood? No. Some people teach that, do they not? Just human blood. Uh, what was possible, what was in, what was uh, the uh, impossibility for him to have uh, human blood on? What is the reason why he didn't have just blood, human blood? What is Adam's blood like? What does it contain? Corrupt, take sin, everything. Yes, Sam. Uh, this is Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Purchased with his own blood. God's blood. God's blood. The source of the Lord Jesus Christ's blood was God. I remember a lot of medical men differ on it, but many of the things that I've read up say that the, there's not a single person or part of the blood that comes from the husband. It's the mother that gives the child the blood. You read up there. Look at it. What is it? The father. The father. The father. Father gives the blood. Oh, I got it twisted. Okay. Father gives the blood? Okay. The Thanks. type. The blood type. The mother has nothing to do. The baby's blood is its own. Yes, right. But in other words, father gives the type. Father gives the So, all right. But since, since the Lord Jesus did not have a human father, what's true? His father gave him his blood. God, God yes. the Father gave the blood. Yes. That's Rick and then Dan. That's what I was going to say. God oh, the Father. God, yes. Pastor Dan. So, sin comes from the Father. Sin comes from the Father. And Adam was. Similar headship sin comes from the father, Adam. Mm -hmm. He passes down 
when we came to the birth of Christ, Christ had no earthly father, so he had no right. sin, human sin nature. Mm -hmm. He was perfect God and perfect man. What heretic on the blood of Christ teaches that Jesus had just human blood that cures him? John, John MacArthur. He said just human blood. And he says, he makes a <coughs> farce, he makes a laugh out of the blood of Christ. If Christ's blood was divine, why did he just bleed on somebody? Just a blasphemous thing. He shed his blood where? On the, cross. the cross of Calvary. It's true that when they whipped him, blood was shed. Is that the thing that saves us? No. They whipped him in his back and so on. Uh, but it's his shed blood at the cross. He died and shed his blood. And there's two separate things. Pastor Dan. Also, it came from theme as well. Bob Thien, all right. Bob yeah. This uh, principle about the blood and some other, other heresies, the, the blood principle came from Thien. Mm -hmm. uh, Bob Jones Jr. identified <coughs> the, the position of John MacArthur, at least at the time, mm -hmm. that it was Themeism. Themeism. Believe, yeah. That's interesting. Well, thank you, Pastor Dan. All right. So uh, we're bought with the price of price with the blood of Christ. Now, uh, what does John MacArthur say? We're still, since we're on MacArthur, what does he say about... <coughs> The blood of Christ. What? How does he define the blood of Christ? Yes, John MacArthur. What is it? Human blood. Human blood. What else? Irrelevant. No, he mm -hmm. says it's a figure of speech. Figure of speech. Uh, Tammy? Yeah. A metonym. <coughs> a metonym. More figure of speech. A metonym for death. Now, there's different, 14 different places in Scripture. It's the blood of Christ. If we can't believe it's truly what it means, they're two different Greek words. Blood is hyma. Death is thanatos. They're two different words. And they're, they're separate. And it's true that the Lord Jesus shed his blood at his death, but it's the blood that God says does this and this forgives sins and makes us nigh to the Lord. All these 14 different things that the blood of Christ does. It's just like the, the Passover lamb. What was Moses to take at the Passover time? The blood. But where did he get that blood first? From the lamb. From a lamb. How long? How many days do you have to see? Make sure it's a good lamb. Four, Four days. Four. Then what do you do with that lamb? Kill it. The lamb died. Then what do you have to do? The, the blood on the top of the top and side portion of the door. See, the death and the application of the blood, separate things. The blood of Christ. Will had something. Go ahead, Will. I was going to say, what did he say about uh, Hebrews where it said, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin? That's right. that's right. Without the shedding of blood, no remission of sin. So that's that's the shedding of blood. Obviously, it's not death, the shedding of death. Anna. How can the life of flesh in the death thereof. That's good. Old Testament. Leviticus, isn't it? The, the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Did George Washington's physicians know that? Nope. No. Why do you think they don't know that? Because they bled him. They, they bled him. They didn't read their Bible. Didn't read their Bible, did they? <laughs> yeah, Barbara. He entered heaven in the Holy of Holies with his own blood. With his own God blood. God accepted it. So Amen. if it were just human blood, it would right. have been unacceptable. Exactly. Now, let's show what happens... When we die, as far as our blood is concerned, when we die, our bodies die, what happens to our blood? It corrupts. How do we know that? How do we know that? Do the, un do the, do the, under do the undertakers know that? Yeah. What do the undertakers do? They take it out and put in formaldehyde. Because they know it corrupts. How long was the Lord Jesus Christ in the grave? Three days. Three days, three days. What was true of his body? Did not corrupt. In fact, it says in the David in the Psalms, Thou shalt not leave thy holy one and, and uh, see the corruption. Do not let thy holy one see corruption. Or Jesus did not see. He had that didn't have man's blood. He would have corrupted. Three days was smelled in that sense. But he was perfect God and perfect man. So we're bought with the price, the price of the blood of Christ. Now, what's this therefore, therefore? In verse 20. <laughs> it's the logical conclusion of what went before. Well, logical conclusion of what went before. <laughs> if we're bought with the price, therefore, what are we supposed to do? Those who are genuine Christians, not unsaved, they can't do this. What are we supposed to do? We're to glorify God. Glorify God. Yes. Because Same. we belong to God, yes. we're to live like we do. Live like we do. That's right. Therefore, because we've been bought with the price, and now there are two different areas that we should glorify God in. What is the first one? Body. What's, what's the second one? Spirit. spirit. What's the difference between the body and the spirit? One physical, one spiritual. One physical, one spiritual. Can you see the spirit? No. 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 What's in addition to the spirit do we have that you can't see? Soul. 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 How many parts of man in the scriptures? Three. Three. What are they? Body, soul, spirit. spirit. What, is the, what, what, what order is the scripture? <laughs> spirit, soul, and body. 
I know normally people say body, soul, but body, soul, and spirit. What is the scripture order in First Thessalonians 5.23? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay, but anyway, there are three parts. Now, it's, it's true that spirit and soul are immaterial, and body is material. So some people just think they're two parts, material and immaterial. But really, there are three parts. But here, God says, we're to glorify God, first of all, in our body. Now, how are we going to do that? These are, who's this, who's the ye refer to? The Christian, genuine Christian in Corinth, and by application today. How can a genuine Christian glorify God in his or her body? Do what they do. Do keeping, what they do. Yes, keeping his commandments. Keep his commandments, what he says in his word. What we say, what we do, what we think, where we go. What we do, what we don't do. Glorify. What does the glorify mean? Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Praise him. Uh, Praise him. Exalt him. These are things. Glorify God. In our body. What we do. Uh, now, what's the next part? What's the spirit? How we glorify God in our spirit? What's that mean? That means on the inside, inner man. Inside, inner man. Does God know what's our inner man like? Yes. yes. Do people know what our inner man like? No. People don't know. No. They can they can suspect. That's <laughs> why they can give a suspicion. They don't know. How does what attribute does God have that He knows inside of us? Omniscience. Yes, sir. Yes, the Lord Jesus Christ said, "Therefore, let your light shine." Let your light so shine before men that men may see your good works and glorify your, your Father, Father which, which is in heaven. heaven. That's right. So that's part of glorifying God with your body. See your good works. Glorify God, which is in your body. So the Spirit. Now, which of the two can be hidden and subverted or not seen the easiest? The body, what we do with our bodies, what we do with our spirits. Which could be hidden the easiest? Body. The body, spirit. the spirit. There's a division of the house. Who's right? What could be hidden easiest? Sins of the body or sins of the spirit? Sins of the spirit. Sins of the spirit. Why? Why? People can't see that. You can't see the spirit. We don't know. I mean, you and I, if we're genuine Christians, we can think bad thoughts. Nobody can see the thoughts. Does God see the thoughts? He knows everything about us. But in our bodies, if we slap somebody in the face, they can see that that's an action activity. They can see it very easily. And the guy they slapped can feel it. So feeling and see. Yes, Sam. I just thought of a verse, 2 Corinthians 7, 1. Mm -hmm. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, yes. perfecting holiness in the fear of God. The two phases, flesh and spirit, <laughs> body and spirit. So here, glorify God in your body and your spirit. What's this last phrase mean? Which are God's? What's that mean? What's our God's? Because they belong to Him. Now, what if you took away the apostrophe? What would that mean? Take away the apostrophe. Which are God, man is God. Nobody, nobody uh, possesses That would mean that we are God's. We become God's. Now, what false religion says when you get to have you become God's? The Mormons, I say that. Horrible heresy. You never become God's. That's horrible. And so the apostrophes are very important. Yeah. On next week in our morning service, we're going to talk about ye are Christ, apostrophe S. That means you belong to Christ. Yeah. But a lot of people are taking away the apostrophe, you're Christ, you become Christ. Yeah. Horrible. So apostate religions say that, teach that, but it's a terrible thing. So, which are God's? What does it mean, which are God's? What, what does the which refer back to in verse our 20? Spirit and our body. Spirit, spirit and body. And that means, God, that means what? God, yes, Sam, Tammy. Um, the New Age movement, they, they believe, people in that believe they're gods. They do? They, they, they believe they're gods. That's interesting. It's terrible. Gnosticism taught the same thing. Apostasy, uh, was it? Gnosticism. Gnosticism, yeah, Gnosticism. The body's gone, yes. Yes, uh, Sam. I guess in a, in a way, the whole human race, that's the problem. We all want to be little gods. Yeah. We want to run our lives and do what we want mm -hmm. to do, and we don't you know, naturally want mm -hmm. anybody telling us otherwise. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yes, well. Yeah, I'm saying we, we all want to believe uh, the lie that Jesus told Satan that we can be as gods. Oh, yeah, that's right. He said that, didn't he? He can be as gods. What did Satan mean, I wonder? That you can determine for yourself what's all right. wrong. Just like God, see? Yeah, just like God. Was Satan right or wrong? He was wrong. Is Satan ever right? Part right. Part, part right. Part right. Part, part wrong. Right. Yes. Anthony. There are people in this world who don't believe in any gods. Mm -hmm. That's even more horrible than the Mormons. Yes. What do you call those people who don't believe in any gods? 
but but when but they now if the atheists exactly. wait a minute if the atheists don't believe in God, why do they swear by God's name and Jesus Christ's name? Why do they blaspheme and use those names? You've heard them say that. They're Anna. Why do they thank God? Because I'm passing. In passing? They use the word thank God. Yes, in passing. Yes, Will. I was going to say there are very few true atheists. Amen. Because they believe that men are, are evolving and because they're the highest evolved creature, then therefore they are God. Okay. They are humanists rather than atheists. Now, now, Sam was saying something at lunch about atheists. What is the proof that atheists really do believe in God? Because they're if they claim that God doesn't exist, they're sure angry about something that doesn't exist. You know, yeah. They're angry at something that doesn't exist. I say they're not really, Which, deep down inside they're atheists. They're just believers and God-haters. Yeah. Is what they're it's saying. irrational, isn't it? It's an irrational belief. So, what, now, if it's... You know, excuse me, I'm sorry. They hate God when they don't believe in God. I don't know. That's a good problem. It's a good question. It's well, impossible. Well, I've, I've, I've dealt with a lot of atheists. Mm -hmm. And if you probe a little further and get beneath the surface, surface, mm -hmm. they really don't not believe in God. When you mm -hmm. when you answer all their questions and re, and refute all their absurd reasons, mm -hmm. then it gets out. They don't want God telling them what to do. Yes, that's yeah. what it comes down yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, Bill. Everybody feels something within themselves uh, that there is a God so because awesome. God did put a part of Himself in us, mm -hmm. uh, and that's what these uh, so-called atheists. Uh, don't want to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them say, oh, Mother Nature is responsible yeah. for something. Uh, anything figurative uh, that they can use uh, to release their uh, their frustration. Mm -hmm. They don't, a the atheists don't have any definite beliefs at all. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they suspect that there might be a God, uh, but uh, and that's why they blaspheme him. Mm -hmm. Especially our Christian God, uh, but yes. uh, you know, they're, they're just totally wrong. Right, uh, Doctor Don Boyce has got an article back on a book rack to, to talk about the, the the new atheists, the very serious problems. Yes, go ahead. I was going to say I got a better reason why there's no atheists because mm -hmm. God's word says it right here in mm -hmm. Romans chapter one. It says right here. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who mm -hmm. hold the truth. The word hold there means suppress. Mm -hmm. They suppress the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shown it to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you go on to read, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. Yeah. It yeah. says, because that when they knew God, they yeah. glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Yes. So they know God exists, they just reject him. That's, that's, that's right. It is. Now, in verse 20, in back verse 20, if indeed the genuine Christians, ye, bought, are bought with a price, the blood of the Lord Jesus at Calvary, and to glorify God your body and your spirit, which are God's. Again, we said which are God's means what? Which belong to God. And we said before, let's repeat it, if a genuine Christian, now let me ask you this, do all genuine Christians understand that their bodies and spirits belong to God? No. I think there are a lot of people who don't understand, genuine Christians. Why don't they know it? Not taught. They haven't been reading the scriptures. Here it is in this verse, they haven't read this verse, which are God. And so, as, well, let me repeat again, if, if genuine Christians really realize that our spirits and and our bodies belong to God. What should we do? If we really realize that our bodies and spirits belong to God, what should we do? We should obey Live like God. Use God's word. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've got to have the right God's word and find it and do it. Yes, Pastor Dan's got something. Uh, Pastor Wade, excellent sound doctrinal teaching, both this morning's service and the present Bible study. Uh, Tammy Wake today's uh, blessed this, this morning's song. And Mrs. Wake, a good job piano playing. Thank you. Jim Kanata from Massachusetts. Let's wave to Jim Kanata from Massachusetts. Let's wave to Jim Kanata. There. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. All you can see is absolutely he's watching. All right. Massachusetts, <laughs> long ways away. Long ways away. Yes, he's there on the internet. All right. Uh, so let's go on then to chapter 7. Any other questions, first of all, on chapter 6 before we move on? Well, let's go to chapter 7, verses 1, 2, and 3 together. Now concerning the things whereof he wrote unto me, 
It is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Concerning the things you wrote unto me, who's the ye referred to again? Christians at Corinth, by application we cannot apply this. They wrote, but he says it's good for a man not to touch a woman. What does that mean? Say that again. What's the question? It's, it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Will? Should be touching women that aren't your wife uh, mm -hmm. in, in any way. All right. Amen. Yes, Sam. It seems to me what Paul is saying, is, and which agrees with the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, is mm -hmm. that the best way to serve God is celibacy, but it's not a necessity. All right. That's what the Lord that's Jesus it. Christ taught, and that's what I believe Paul said yes. here. Now, this touch, haptomai, is what the Greek word is, many times implies sexual relations with a woman. Not to touch in the sense of have sex relations with that woman. Many have interpreted it this way. It's not good for a man to touch a woman. But the word, yes, Anna. But sometimes <clears throat> physical contact prior to that act can lead to that act. Yes, right. But, um, so it's better to avoid engaging in the... In the touching, that's right, Anne. That's right. That's right. The preliminary situation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sam. Someone told me once, uh, never ever be alone with any woman except for three: your mother, <laughs> your sister, or your wife. That's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> Why would they tell you? So now, yes, uh, Cass. You wouldn't understand, though. Cass. I didn't understand uh, Sam's comment about. I mean, it should be celibate. It's better. No, no. He said it's 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 good. It says in the book of uh, First Corinthians here, he talks about, but let every man to his own calling. If a man is not called to be without a, a wife, he shouldn't be there, see. Oh, uh, so, if a man is called not to have a wife? Yes, sometimes that's the case. Oh, yeah. If a man is... But most of the time, it's, God says, it's, good, it's not good for Not me. good for a man to be alone, absolutely. So a man should have a wife. Should have a wife. Normally, that's the case, absolutely. Yes. What I, meant, what, what I meant was, is that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, spoke about... Uh, marriage and divorce and his teachings were so mm -hmm. radical to the people that heard him that the disciples said it is better than not to marry mm -hmm. and I can't quote for, word for word but the Lord Jesus Christ pretty much said to those that this gift has been given to mm -hmm. let them do it pretty yeah. much in other words if you if God has gifted you mm -hmm. and I believe Paul in his epistles writes about that, that the, the, the Corinthians would be better for them to be single like he is mm -hmm. but so they don't lust, yeah. marry. I believe that's what Paul yes, teaches. Yes, yes, and I think of this same verse, or the same verse sort of implies that. In other words, the Lord Jesus said there are those who are, are eunuchs, uh, made so by men, castrated eunuchs. They're also made eunuchs of their own their own choosing, see, not having a desire to have a marriage. Uh, but here this says, uh, not to touch women, the word of chapter, verse 2, nevertheless. What does nevertheless mean? Nevertheless. Notwithstanding. Notwithstanding. All right. It's good not for a man not to touch a woman, have any sexual relation with her, or to even get close to anything pr prior to that. Uh, to avoid fornication. Again, fornication meaning what? Sexualization. Sex. Sexualization part. What is the requirement? What is God's rule in verse 2? Let every man have his own wife. What does that mean? One wife. One wife not somebody else's wife. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and what about the woman? No, not somebody else's husband. Her own husband. Now, other places of scripture are married, supposedly, until death parts us. Many marriage ceremonies use that phrase, until death us do part. Do all marriages follow that? No. <laughs> There's a breakup, and it's sad, but, but, so, in other words, God's answer to fornicate sin, sexual sin, apart from marriage, is to let a man have his own wife, woman have her own husband. Anna. The fact that there are both these phrases present, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband, with both of those phrases there, it, um, 
it goes, it um, refutes the concept of polygamy. That's good. Just one to, to each customer. How many women? How many women did uh, God create for Adam? One. That's right. A, a second. I was enough. That's right. One is enough. That's right. We love our wives, but that's just the way people say something. One enough. Anyway, one at a time. When death comes to either mate, what does the scripture say is permissible? They can remarry when death comes. That's right. What does it say? Only in the Lord. That's right, in the Lord. In other words, saved people should marry saved people. Uh, the thing I was going to ask about is this. If it says in verse 2, every man should have his own wife, what is the gender of the word man? Here. Male. 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 What is the gender of the word wife? Female. What does this do to sodomites? What does it do to <laughs> Mas masculine family? What does that do? Does this justify two women and two men? No. See, this is ridiculous. We've got to stand for the principles of the Bible, no matter what our government says, no matter what they say, whatever penalty we must pay. Do all Christians like to pay penalties? No. no. Would all Christians go to pay penalties? Do they pay? Good. Yeah, okay, good, thank you. No, see, they, see it's difficult. But now, in the early church, the first century, when the people were said, now, worship Caesar, whoever it is, or God, and those, you line them up on two sides, one's going to worship God, one's worship Caesar, those, those who are going to worship God, what they do to them? They burn them alive, they crucify different ones, and we going to have that same decision. Yes, from what I understand, in the Roman Empire, once a year, each citizen was required to take a pinch of incense and to throw it in a fire and say, Caesar is Lord. When they would try to force the Christians, they would say, Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it would slaughter them. Yeah. Well, we're going to stop right here at verse number two, but do you have any other comments? On, we'll pick this up, Lord willing, next week. Any other comments before we close? Or well, if not, let's close. And a word of prayer. We thank thee, Father, for thy word. We thank thee for these very important teachings. Take care of us and use us to be anywhere unsaved in our audience this morning, this afternoon, and or in our video audience and the internet. May they come to the Lord Jesus Christ in genuine faith. Be saved. Those of us who have trusted our Savior, help us to live for him. Our spirit, soul, and body, we thank thee that he has bought us with a price, yes. the price of his own precious blood. Guide us and direct us in our life. Bring yes, us back on Thursday for Bible study and prayer service. And guide and direct us through this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Be sure to say hello to our friends there.